All right, here to react, former Shell Oil President John Hofmeister. Great to see you, sir. Um, let me ask you this. Phil just brought up a great point talking about the debate last night. Vice President Biden wouldn't admit that he said he wanted to ban fracking, but when pushed, he did say he wanted to phase it out. Um, Phil Flynn just brought up the fact that the energy industry is roughly 8% of GDP. I'll add to that. It represents roughly 10 million jobs in this country when alternative energy is only about half a million at this point. When Joe Biden is sort of looking at this, he's sort of missing the forest through the trees, don't you think? Well, I think he's missing a key point. Energy is the lifeblood of this country. And what the oil industry does is produce the molecules for natural gas and produce the molecules that turn into diesel, fuel, gasoline, etc. Before we had fracking and before we advanced from 5 million barrels a day production domestically in 2005 to 12 million barrels a day in 2019, uh, we were under the control of the Saudis and OPEC on the price and availability of oil. What Joe is proposing is to put us back under the control of OPEC because we will not be able to produce enough domestic energy. And the transition we're talking about to electric vehicles is going to take, who knows, 20, 30, 40 years? I've seen statistics and studies that say half of the cars in 2050 will be electric. Well, that means there's still a, you know, hundreds of millions in this country alone and billions of cars around the world still need oil. I think for Joe Biden to take over the control and the regulation of the energy industry is dangerous because he doesn't know anything about energy to start with, but you don't pass along high costs of limited energy to the poorest in the nation and expect them to be happy about it. Yeah, the way the Democrats will lose out big time is by raising gasoline prices to unaffordable levels. You bring up a great point. And when it comes to OPEC specifically, there was a time in this country's history where the Middle East basically owned us because of their um, energy output. Now we are one of the top producers globally. Um, we are exporting energy and we are energy independent, as the president pointed out last night. Um, certainly there is a way. And he's not saying, President Trump, to not invest in alternative energies. He just understands that it's going to take a long time to get there. And in the meantime, you have to keep those 10 million people People employed. Everyone in the industry, and I'm part of it, speaks about the great energy transition of the 21st century. But it's going to take the century to pull it off because nobody understands the scale, the size, the, the, the fleet that's out there, the need on a 24-7, 365 basis for molecules and electrons. We cool our homes, we heat our homes. We, we, draw, we have mobility because of it. And, and so it's a lifestyle and it's an economic way of living life by having available and affordable energy with plenty of it domestically so we're not depending on energy from abroad. Let me just ask you real quick. Um, last night, Joe Biden's presentation here and making his case when it comes to the energy industry, it's not going to bode well for him in his home state of Pennsylvania or in Ohio, for example, where fracking is the lifeblood of the economy and down south in Texas, um, you know, where the oil industry is based. Your thoughts? Well, energy matters in 50 states out of 50. And the price of energy, the availability of energy, and of course, at the very, at the what, what we used to call the coal face, but at the refinery level or at the drilling level, it's jobs and it's well-paying jobs. People in the energy industry don't make much less than $80,000 a year because of the pay that is part of and the benefits that are part of jobs in this industry. And, and so it's a, it's a tremendous impact on the economy to try to strangle by regulation, by government fiat, the energy transition will take place in the 21st century, but it will be driven by market forces, mm. not government. Government politicizes energy, and if you politicize energy, you make it more expensive for the poor, and you, the rich don't care because they have plenty of disposable income for energy, and what you ultimately do is drive the price up that it takes the economy into recession because people have to pay their energy bill to live their life, and they don't have money for other things.
John Hofmeister, great to see you. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank that you. Makes a lot